I don't necessarily think that bigger is better when it comes to spaceships. For example, with the 100 Eye being a small ship, you're a small target in battle. Your cargo is easily accessible, and if there's maintenance to be done on your components, it's all there to hand. These are examples of why a small ship does have its place. A lot of the time with ships, there'll be many changes made from concept to final. Thankfully with the 100 series, however, that hasn't really happened. Obviously it was very important for us to keep the look of that initial concept going, which we've managed to do. I found that working on a, a small interior such as the 100, you have these specific areas that have a unique purpose and the difference of working on a small ship like the 100i is everything is contained in this small space. When the 100i was initially concepted we were obviously going off the metrics that were being used at the time and since then metrics have been updated. So for the dashboard for example we've now gone into a more physicalized dashboard where every button can be interacted with. This will be the first new ship using this new mechanic. It's always a challenge trying to fit everything you need to into a small package. For example, with the, the seat we had to raise to accommodate for the landing gear from the exterior. Although an issue through making an animation to work, it actually provided a nice result in the end because it kind of separated the pilot from the living space, even though in tight, confined space, it gave a feeling of a separation. So the components went through a couple of iterations of placement and layout just to try and maximize the space. The bed went through a couple of iterations um, in terms of animations and placement. So the pilot will have that default logout option in their ship. So no need to worry about going out somewhere, being lost and having to find somewhere else to log out. You can log out in the 100 series. One of the evolutions of the 100 series was the missile launches. In order to not change the look of the exterior of the ship, we built these bespoke missile launchers that are tucked underneath the ship itself. So the 100i and the other two variants will all have a missile launcher at the front of the ship, which is tucked away. And the 125a has an extra bigger missile launcher also at the rear of the ship. Now these are completely hidden away, so again, you wouldn't notice them at first, um, which helps us keep the nice sleek appearance of the 100 series in place. I'm very pleased with how the 100 series has gone personally. Being able to focus on a smaller contained area and actually focus those details in has been refreshing. It's been a, a great experience. Um, it's very fun uh, to work on. Uh, I learned a lot of new things. There's been very little change made, no major issues. I hope players, when they fly the ship, get a sense of grandeur and class when they're flying it. While the 100 series of starter ships is making its way through the ship pipeline ahead of its debut in the upcoming Alpha 311, the front end experience for Star Citizen itself is being refined by the use of building blocks. Now, while this next version may look and feel much the same as you've already been used to, the conversion itself will provide improved reliability and set the stage for additional functionality down the line. So what we did this quarter is we converted our front-end UI to the new building block system that we're, we're converting the rest of the game over to. And what this is doing is it's setting us up for the future uh, for further expansion of our, our front-end experience. And we wanted to walk you through what we've done so far. This is the new UI that we've put together. You'll notice that there's a lot more real estate because we do have a lot of panoramic shots we want to swap out for the players on a regular basis. What we will get to is, is some sort of character selection where you can see your character in the, in the middle of this screen here. And so this is kind of setting us up for the future of that. Uh, you notice we got the videos running running in the background of these buttons here. Uh, so we preserved that from the Flash implementation. Um, We've got the friends list here and the notifications list here. But um, one thing I wanted to show you that we thought was pretty cool is we actually allowed these to pin to the side of the screen now. So kind of emphasizes that freeing up the space so that you can see these cool backgrounds that, that we're putting in, into the game here for you. So on the way in, we wanted to try and, and think about the players that have never played our game before. So what do they need to do here? Uh, there, there's a drop down here that, uh, that they need to fill in and, and once they do, 
cool, you get another drop down, right? So we're, we're trying to guide the new players through this process a, l a little bit more, uh, a little more hand holding. Uh, but what we've got here is, is we've got uh, a bunch of different backgrounds so that you can kind of see the location that you're going to. We thought that was a, a really important thing to uh, try and put into place and, um, you know, and then you could join the game, right? So going back to our main screen here, I've got a party invite and bam, there you go. So all the previous functionality still exists, right? Uh, now, one thing I want you to see here, uh, people were kind of talking about like, man, I really wish I had a way to, to kind of get rid of all these. Well, guess what? We, we added a button that will literally clear all of the passive uh, notifications and text here will kind of uh, be changed to indicate that as well as say a clear passive or something along those lines. But, so you remember we had that huge pop-up in the middle of the screen here that was just kind of ugly. It kind of overlapped some of these other UI elements. It was it was a little little clunky. And while we're still in the process of kind of honing in on the size of this this window here, um, you'll kind of notice that that the region selection is now down uh, down in the corner here. And one of the things we're actually going to do before you guys get your hands on is we're actually going to make this pop up instead of a down here uh, so we, we call it a drop drop up <laughs> so uh, by converting this all over it allows us to have much better control over the the UI as a whole so that as we transition you know back and forth between these screens uh, it, it, it's a wholesale clear or fade of, of the UI so I know what you guys are thinking this looks a lot like what we had before but what is really important to understand is that this puts the entire front end that everything else hooks into into a, a modular system that we can expand on really easily so somebody wants to add a new game mode theaters of war perhaps uh done it's a single button it goes right in if we want to add a, a new character customizer or expand on uh just the, the other things that tie into the front end like cool now we show your character in the middle now we show you know uh, an organization you know list or whatever it is it's going to hook in super easy, and that's what this is really all about here. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that with the 100 series, good things can still come in small packages. That just because you're starting out in the verse doesn't mean you have to look like it. And that Building Blocks continues to be the tool allowing our designers a modular system that can be easily expanded upon and further configured as development continues. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll see you next week.